Welcome back to another episode of Simplifying Social Media. Today, I am joined by Kyle Toomey, team leader of the Toomey Group at Compass in Northern Virginia. Happy to be here. I'm excited. Thanks, Tammy. <laughs> we got connected on Instagram. I remixed one of your videos, which was amazing. And it went like kind of crazy. And everyone was like, oh my God, I need to remix this video. How do I do it? So I'm super excited to hear about your journey with video marketing. Before we dive in, tell me a little bit about your team size of production for context, and then we'll just jump right in. By the way, you made me aware of remixes. I did not know they were a thing. So you actually put that on my radar. So thank you for doing that. <laughs> um, anyway, I run I run the Tumi Group at Compass. I've been in real estate for about eight or nine years now. Did it fresh out of college. Our team's very small, but mighty. We have a couple agents on the team. We have one admin, and we do anywhere from 50 to 60 transactions a year, somewhere in the 30 to 35 million range in production per year. Do you guys have a specific niche? Do you do everything? We're kind of all over. We do handle the DMV area, but mostly Northern Virginia. A lot of first time home buyers and younger families come to us just because they're seeing us on social media. But I would say the younger generation of buyers is probably our forte. And then the, the, the client that we help purchase at home, they come back to us to sell. So it's kind of cyclical. So that's a great intro into my first question is what role has social media played in your real estate business? I think it's been, a, it's been a huge role, not a huge social media guy, but I have started to take it serious in the last six months or so, which has gotten a lot of eyeballs on, on me. I don't pay for marketing. I don't pay for advertising. I've been very lucky to spoil my clients over the years and be referral based at that point. So what I think about my social media as is kind of my testimonial landing page. I feel that most of my clients, they're seeing what I'm doing on social or they're coming to me through social before they even look me up on Google or th before they even look me up on Zillow. I think they're more likely to land on my TikTok page or my Instagram or Facebook before any of those other sources. So that's why I'm trying to double down on my social media right now. And are you seeing a different kind of ROI from social media versus any other type of marketing that you're doing? So it's tough to say just because we don't spend a lot of other money on marketing and advertising, right? So our, our ROI is mainly social media. Now, I would say on average per year, I probably get one transaction a month through social media. Now, is that someone that's coming to me directly and saying, hey, I came across this reel you just put up, put up. I'd love to interview you. It's that, but also someone that's like, Hey, my friend shared your page. I've heard of you. I'd love to interview you to see if you're a good fit, right? So we kind of get different folks that are reaching out. But again, it kind of goes back to, I feel like my mostly my Instagram is my landing page for my business. I feel like someone's even going to go to my Instagram before they look me up on online or my, my website. And so if I can just put out as much as possible on there and be seen more and trusted more. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. I, I really started focusing on social media services this year specifically. And one of the challenges is measuring the ROI, right? Because it's very rare that someone's going to be like, I saw this video. I am pre-approved. Please work with me. <laughs> like, exactly. It does not work like that. <laughs> no. So, <laughs> so for those who are just struggling with converting leads off of socials, what does that look like on your end logistically? Like, how do you get a lead to become a buyer or seller? Yeah, I think I'll give a specific example recently. So one of our videos popped off um, probably about a month or so ago. It was a house tour. We were running through the home. We had the ceilings, TikTok soundtrack playing in the background. And we got over 2 million views on that, right? And so how did we justify the ROI on that video? Well, we got a listing directly from it because we had someone that said, hey, we saw your video, thought it was really cool. We'd love to interview you. So that turned into a direct lead. And we had roughly three to four people that wanted to see the home from that video. Now, did they end up becoming the purchaser? No, they were not the purchaser, but they were a prospective buyer for that home, which is great, right? Because my job is to sell that home. So at least getting people in there from a social media video. And two, they become a prospective lead for me as well. Now, we're still working on some of those leads. So it's tough to say if we've capitalized on them just yet, but we did get a listing and some potential buyer clients from one of our first reels that blew up. Okay. So if I'm understanding correctly, most of your leads are just direct messaging you on the platform. Direct messaging me on the platform or someone that's emailing or calling me and saying, Hey, we'd love to interview you. We came across your social media and we you know, liked what we saw. I wanted to hear what you're all about type of thing. Got it. 
And I know that you guys have some really cool videos going around right now. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. Like, who's the mastermind? How does that come about? Who films? All that stuff. Good question. So I'd love to take credit for it, but it's not me. So (laughs) as, as I mentioned before, I wanted to double down on my social media about six months or so ago at the beginning of the year. And so I did bring someone on, right? And I think they actually have a lot of similarity to what you offer in that I, I always have these cool ideas going through my head, right? And it's like, all right, we need to get this content out there. How do we do it? How do we do it? Well, this guy not only does the filming aspect of it, but kind of strategy behind it as well. And so he is doing a lot of the filming. We're thinking about even things like what hashtags are we going to put up? What trending sounds are we going to put up? How are we going to make this captivating for the audience? So bringing someone on, his name's Diego. I'll give him a little shout out right now. It's really helped amplify my social media. So... In 2023 and beyond, those who are really wanting to double down on social media marketing, do you think it's absolutely necessary to bring on a videographer? What is your thoughts on that? I think before you bring someone on, there there is probably a, a middle point that you can go for. And, and what I've learned, and I think, you know, everyone talks about like the algorithm, right? Yeah. Like to, to me, the algorithm, algorithm is consistency. I've always been pretty good on, on Instagram. I've been doing Instagram you know, for seven, eight years now for real estate business. Um, But then when I started taking it serious and thinking about content and actually putting stuff out there that was posting, not necessarily daily, but, you know, multiple times a week, putting a lot of stories up, being in front of, it's free at the end of the day. So why not leverage it? You can just be consistent before you start to bring someone on. And then for me, it was bringing someone on. And the packages that he offers are, I can film content, I can help you with content strategy, or we can do all of the above. And to me, I wanted to take advantage of all the above. Mm. I love that you mentioned that because I think something that people who are looking to hire a videographer don't think about, it's like, okay, do you want someone who's literally just going to do what you tell them? Or do you want someone who's actually going to take ownership of that and help you come up with ideas that are going to convert more of like a strategy standpoint? Absolutely. And to talk about the strategy aspect of that. So our first video that popped off, not the one you remixed, but the first video that popped off was, you know, the ceiling sound that people Mm -hmm. use on, on TikTok. It was, we need to show off this house. It's one of our listings, okay? Now, how do we do that in a creative way? Well, we put a little caption on it that said, for Gen Z buyers out there, and everyone started talking about it, right? It was, it was people were, you know, poo-pooing it. Some people were (laughs) loving it. Gen Z was just going in, but there was just a little caption on it that really got everyone talking. And that was my video guy's idea. So just even that one small idea that he could offer that I wasn't able to think of was really what got the attention that that video um, deserved. Absolutely. And that's like the make or break, right? Like I always tell people how you edit your video is going to like completely change how it performs. And that's why like bringing someone on who knows those intricacies is like so valuable. Tell me a little bit about how you guys make sure you attract one local people and two people who are potential clients in the future. Yeah. So kind of our game plan and strategy right now is, um, you know, I've sold over 300 homes since I've been in real estate. So there is a, a local business that's here and trusted and will continue to send me referrals. And that's great. So my mindset moving forward is we really want to double down on the social and the business. Let's get as many eyeballs as possible right now. So we've been trying to make these, you know, everyone wants to go viral and we're not sitting here trying to be viral per se, but we're trying to get these videos that are getting people to chat, right? The more eyeballs I can get right now, the more followers I can get right now, the more people watching me. And then I have an actual audience. And so we're in that portion right now, we're trying to get the audience. And after that to us comes converting those people into folks that know, like, and trust me and my team. And then we feel like we'll start to get the business. So our mindset is just get as many eyeballs on us as we can right now, probably dedicate a year to doing that. And then people will start to trust us. And then it'll be someone that's like, hey, I've been following your social. I have a friend that's looking to buy in Virginia. You were the first person I thought of. That's the type of lead that we want in the next year or so. Absolutely. It's, oh my gosh, I love everything you just said because social media is totally a long game. I have a lot of newer agents come and want to work with me and we might not be a great fit because they typically need a transaction like right now. And social media is cyclical. I love that that um, metaphor that you use because typically in my experience, and you can agree or disagree with me from your point of view, but in my experience, you'll have something pop off and that will gain you X amount of followers, right? But those are top of funnel, cold 
they just saw you once people. And so then you have now this work to do to warm them up. Like you said, no, like trust you before they actually convert. So it's like this whole thing. And then you have something else pop off and then you're starting again with those people while nurturing the original people. So it's like all this stuff you have to think about when you are creating content consistently. I think you're so spot on. And just to follow up on that, we we've had probably four or five videos that have popped off recently and they've all happened in the last three months or so. I went from 3000 followers to we're about to hit 10,000 followers on Instagram and TikTok went from 700 followers to 8,000 followers. So things have really gone up. We've lost some of those followers, which Mm -hmm. is fine and expected. I'm not going to let that get me down, but now we have eyeballs on us. Right. And we're having conversations with people, whether they're in the Midwest or California, whatever it may be, there's a healthy chance that they're going to know someone coming to Northern Virginia. And I'll probably hopefully be the first person that they think of. So I'm not expecting to get, leads on leads on leads from the new 7,000 followers that just came to me. I'm hoping to nurture those folks and become their trusted advisor in real estate to when they know that one person and hopefully they'll send them my way. Yeah. It's such a great way to think about it in the past, like six months or so. I mean, you said you started going all in six months or so ago, right? Um, any strategy shifts that you've noticed because of the algorithm, because of things you've have gone through or whatever it may be that you can give advice on in July of 2023. I'd have just spoiled that question by just <laughs> saying that we we're really just trying to go big with eyeballs and audience at the moment, right? And that's just making content that can relate to people. So, you know, often we'll be scrolling TikTok and Instagram as a regular consumer, but now we're trying to mark down oh, we like this video, let's save it and let's try to make it into Mm. a real estate related video. So actually my three or four videos that have popped off recently have had nothing to do with real estate. They were just things that we saved on TikTok and Instagram, came up with a little bit of an Excel sheet and said, all right, we like this idea as the consumer, let's convert this to a real estate related thing. Mm. And then other things that we're doing too is um, the, the video that you did remix. In my mind, I was thinking of a concept that always comes to my mind, which is, okay, interest rates are always going up and down. Interest rates are always going up and down. Like, how do we convey this in a fun manner for people, right? Instead of me just being like, hey, I'm <laughs> Kyle, I sell homes. Like, <laughs> here's some information on Insta- or on interest rates. It's like, okay, I like to run. I like to work out. Let's get some other realtors involved. And let's actually give a visual of this. So we're just trying to take these concepts that we think about a lot in real estate. We're actually going to film one later today. It's about offer deadlines and we're going to make it running fun related. Okay. So this is really interesting because you had brought in other agents for this, this particular video, correct? Correct. And they're not on your team. None of those folks that in in that video you remix were on my team. Some were just agent friends, some were lenders and agents that I had never met before that when I I said, Hey, we're posting a, a running video. Like who wants to get in? A lot of people were sending me messages. You know, we selected a handful of them and some people I had never met before. But what's really cool about that is one of the lenders that came and one of the realtors that I knew are doing a deal together now. Yes. Just because they met up at this event. It wasn't even an event. It was an hour of us just running and filming, which <laughs> to me, that, that's that's a win to some degree. That's so cool. Yeah. That was my next question. You're reading my mind. <laughs> what kind of wins or positive things came out of this collaboration, collaboration over competition. What does that look like? Do these agents have a big following on social? Were they invited as a collaborator? Like, what did that look like? Collaboration aspect wasn't even thought of when we were doing that stuff. And we're starting to think a little bit more strategically (laughs) about collaborations moving forward because I think they're powerful. But what we were just trying to get was a message that I had thought about in real estate out to the masses, right? And so by by running, that's how we thought we would do it. But here's what I'll say. When we think about getting eyeballs on us, well, this is actually a perfect example. The video that you remixed recently started getting out there in waves and local agents started seeing it. About two weeks after that video was posted, I submitted an offer for buyer clients of mine. And the li- there was ten off- there was nine or 10 offers on this home. And the listing agent responds to me, hey, I saw your video floating around on Instagram. And to me, that was like, boom, I have my entry in here and her trust. Now, is that a direct lead that comes from social media? No, it's not. But I feel like that helped my buyer client get the upper edge on winning. We did get that that contract um, in a multiple offer situation just because there was a little social media recognition or trust involved there. Absolutely. So, you know. It's so funny how social works. Like, I don't know if you're super extroverted, but I'm not. <laughs> and <laughs> I would <by> guess. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> by the time people reach out, they're like, oh my gosh, I already know, trust you. I want to work with you. And I'm like, this is great. I don't have to sell you. <laughs> 
<laughs> right. And, and from my perspective, I think you used to sell real estate, correct? No, or my, my you family. Did, your family did. Okay. Gotcha. So like there is the direct lead aspect, right? Like I'd love to be able to post a video and say, sign up here and work with me. It doesn't really work like that. Right. Yeah. But in that example, I just gave you, there was trust amongst an agent who saw my video and that, that helped secure a deal. So to, again, that's a, that's not a direct lead, but that's a win from social media. In my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. What is in your LinkedIn bio right now? It's Linktree right now. Maybe you can educate me on that, whether that's the best place to go. I think you have a Linktree. I, I, look I do yours. have a Linktree, but the important thing is what's in the Linktree. <laughs> yeah. Um, recent listings, uh, yeah. current listings, right? So when we posted that video that went viral, uh, we wanted to make sure that that listing was actually top of mind because that's yep. why people were coming to my page. So my bio, um, testimonials, things that we've sold over the years. Is it great? No, it's not. And I actually would tell anyone out there that might be watching this, like that's the first impression you can make to someone. And probably in the next week or so, I'll be cleaning up my initial uh, bio and link because that needs to be done. Yeah, absolutely. What advice would you give someone who's struggling to get engagement on their videos? Yeah, one I don't think you can judge and, and care what people think about you, right? Like everyone wants to go viral. Mm. I, I've gone viral multiple times recently and I've been crapped on in the comments and I want to keep doing it again because it's, it's fun and it helps my business to some degree. So I think you cannot care what people think about you, right? Yeah. And that's easy to say, but really just get past it. The internet trolls are not worth it. No. Uh, the next <laughs> thing I would say is consistency. And, and to me, I talked about this. That does not mean posting every single day, everything that's happening in your life. Because I mentioned this at a, a panel I spoke at recently. If I posted that much, I would not want to follow myself. Like that would not, <laughs> that'd be, that'd be overkill. So I think getting, you know, six to 10 stories up a day on Instagram is great. Letting people know that you sell homes, letting people know that you have a personal life and a family and you do stuff outside of real estate. I think that's important to be up there as well. Um, but can, consistency, consistently posting. And then I'd probably say bringing someone on, right? Mm -hmm. I thought I could do all of it in social media, but I was just kind of turning my gears and just kind of going through the motions and doing the same things over. By bringing someone on, I got a better vision on content strategy and just someone behind the camera that could help me out. Absolutely. And I love your, your mindset on get it up and running first on your own. Sure. And then bring someone on because I think I, I agree with that 100 percent. I think bringing someone on off the bat is going to not necessarily be a waste of money, but you're going to be wasting a lot of time trying to build up that consistency when you could have done that on your own first. Absolutely. Yeah, I at least knew how to operate social media to some extent. And if I would have brought this gentleman on, he would have been speaking like a different language to me. So yeah. I think maybe some older folks or whatever, maybe if you want to bring someone on, like you really need to get ingrained with you know TikTok, Instagram, whatever it may be, um, and learn a little bit about it before you bring someone on. So you're not talking different languages with each other. Yeah. Okay. Last question. Are you on threads? Yeah. Good question. I am on threads. I was posting like a hot cake for like the first two days I got on and I haven't <laughs> posted in a while. So my social is mostly Instagram. Um, TikTok's becoming more important in my life. Um, mostly because we use it as an editing platform as well and carry stuff over to Instagram. Facebook, I need to get better at because my parents' generation exists mm. on Facebook. And I feel like that's an audience I'm not tapping into. Threads, the jury's out for me. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know enough about it. So I might divert the question back to you. <laughs> Is it worth it? <laughs> I, we're all novices, right? Like nobody knows. We're all just kind of seeing how it goes at this point, but I'm similar. I was posting a lot in the very beginning because I knew the algorithm was so shiny and new and I wanted to capitalize on that. And now I feel like it's kind of like, everyone's like, are we, are we doing this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're all in that boat right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So we will see, but the nice thing about what you just said is short form video, vertical video can be repurposed for all those platforms, which even is Facebook. Nice. Yeah. Yep, even and we're, Facebook. we're not even, we're not even carrying our stuff over to Facebook right now, which is like, it's probably a missed opportunity to be honest. So we need to be doing that. It is like things that I found with my clients is like things will pop off on TikTok about a week later, they'll pop off on Instagram and about a month later, they'll pop off on Facebook. So if you have something that's like going on TikTok, bringing it over to Facebook early could be a really great opportunity for you guys. Yeah, I think that's well said. 
All right. Where can everyone find you? Uh, Instagram, TikTok, TikTok mostly. K-Y-L-E, Kyle underscore to me, T-O-O-M-E-Y. Give me a follow. Let's connect. Oh, 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 oh,